Around a week ago, I asked y'all on my Instagram to send me your most burning climbing shoe questions. In this video, I'm going to be answering those questions as well as giving my personal experience on every single pair of climbing shoes that I have owned. Before I dive into the questions, I do wanna say that the more common beginner level questions that I got, I'm actually gonna refer you guys to watch this video over here. So if I don't get to your question in this video, it's probably because he could answer it a lot better than me. In addition to that video, another video I really recommend is the Alchemy Behind Climbing Shoes video, I believe, by Adam Andra. How should a climbing shoe fit? Is it best to try and get the smallest size shoe possible? This is a hot topic. Historically, climbing shoes were made out of leather and suede. These are materials that actually tend to stretch a lot. In the past, the golden rule has been to size down as much as you can because the shoes are gonna stretch with time and mold to your feet better. A lot of shoes today are built with synthetic materials, which tend to not stretch as much. Always take into consideration the material of the shoe that you're interested in buying before you try and size it down yourself. If you are a beginner looking to size your shoes, I would prioritize comfort first because if you size down really tight, the pain is just gonna distract you from developing your proper footwork, your proper technique. I would say look for uniform tightness around the different parts of your foot. There shouldn't be any hot spots. There also shouldn't be any dead space when you're first trying on the shoe. I'm actually a person who can tolerate a little bit of pain and when I size my shoes down, I get to a point where it's mildly uncomfortable because that discomfort gives me a lot of confidence in my footwork and that my shoes are performing well. It's a mental thing, it's a personal thing. How much should you size down for bouldering versus top rope climbing? So I don't do sport climbing too often, so I think my perspective in this video is a little bit narrow. When you're bouldering, there is a shorter period of time where you're in your shoes and maybe you'll be able to tolerate the discomfort for that short period of time and when you're climbing, top rope or sport, you're on a longer route, which means you might want to select a shoe that's more comfortable. If you're going outside, look into whether or not you'll be doing like crack climbing or what types of footholds you'll be working on. And if you're going to be stepping on little footholds and edging during like a long route, you actually want to select a shoe that is a little bit stiffer so that it can give you more support to like stand up on those little footholds. Could you give some tips for trying on shoes, like how to select things such as heel shape, width of toe box, etc. There's also another question kind of related. Is there a generally accepted guideline about different brands? Like is Scarpa better if you have larger feet, La Sportiva for narrow heels, etc. etc. This is the million dollar question. When you're trying on shoes, how do you know that the fit that you're feeling in the store is going to translate well to your shoes when you're actually climbing on the wall? Before you try on your different pairs of shoes, I would try to identify what type of foot shape you have. For example, I have a somewhat narrow foot with like bigger toes and a really small heel. My heel tends to slip out of climbing shoes during heel hooks while my toes feel still really cinched down in the front. Once you figure out what type of foot you have, I think it makes it a lot easier to identify those problem areas. As for the question about different brands having like different reputations, even within the same brand, same manufacturer, they will sell a lot of different shoe models to try and cover the wide variety of different foot shapes that people have. I actually found this diagram online that from my limited knowledge of shoes, I think is pretty accurate. Let me know if you wear one of these shoes and whether or not you agree with this. There are so many different variables to consider when buying a shoe. Another really helpful diagram I found online describes all the different variables to consider when buying a shoe. The one thing that's a little confusing about this diagram is it looks like the types of rubber and the thickness of the rubber are like dependent on each other. I would consider those two rows to be like independent of each other. You can have soft and hard rubber of like different thicknesses. All right, we have someone who has a lot of big toe pain, knuckle pain, and it hurts, especially around the knuckle area, and it hurts when positioning feet on the wall. So I don't know your foot shape or your climbing shoe, but I had the exact same problem as you, and I have like really gross blisters on my feet. I think your problem might actually be the same as mine, where your heel is a little bit smaller than average, 
while your toes are the same. So what you could do is maybe look for a shoe that's a low volume shoe. A lot of the quote unquote women's versions of the shoes are actually lower volume and they have like a little bit narrower toe box, which you might not need, but they do have a lower volume heel. That way you can size down the heel and maybe size up the front of the shoe a little bit just enough where you don't feel pain, but it is still snug uniformly around the shoe. I hope this helps. I have a question that says, climbing outdoors in beginner shoes. Absolutely, I did it. I feel like even now with my level of climbing outdoors, my technique is just so crap that the type of shoe that I'm wearing really does not make any difference. Also a big concern with beginner climbers is your footwork isn't that great, meaning you're tearing up the shoe's rubber a lot when you're inside. If you're doing that inside, then you're going to be doing that a lot outside. So having a beginner shoe with thicker rubber, lower sensitivity, might actually be a good thing when you're going outdoors and just like scraping all the way up on those really rough rocks. Is it normal to use different shoes for different difficulties? I guess if you have a project outside and it's your like white whale that you've been working on for a really long time, you don't want to bring your busted pair of gym shoes. You probably want to have a fresher pair, even if it's just for your like mental game, you got like your slick pair of shoes. I think that's totally reasonable. I think the more common thing that I've seen is climbers who have multiple shoes for different styles of climbing. I got a couple of questions on my experience with my different pairs of shoes that I've had over my whole climbing careers. The first pair of climbing shoes I had were the La Sportiva Oxygens, and I found these to be perfectly reasonable shoes for a beginner who's developing their technique. They were not aggressive at all. They were pretty flat. They didn't have like a break-in period because I think they're synthetic. So I did purchase like just my street shoe size. They were pretty breathable and I think they're machine washable. That doesn't really make a difference for me, but I did wash them. They were fine. Those lasted from May 2017 to like around December 2017, which is like seven months. They eventually did get busted through the rubber. That's when I retire the shoes and I get a new pair. I don't really do the resoling or I haven't yet because I haven't found a shoe that works perfectly for my feet yet. After I was done with the Oxygems, I was like, I can get an aggressive pair of shoes because that's what I'm supposed to do now, right? So what I did was I got the So Ill Streets, which I have right here. Oh my gosh, it's so dark. The Sewill sizing is really weird. If you're interested in buying Sewill shoes, research heavily before you do so. I think Sewill kind of has a bad rap because they're like newer on the scene, but they have like really good aesthetics, which attracts a lot of like beginner climbers, I guess, who aren't like familiar with any other brands. I mean, I think they look good. And if you have the type of foot that works well for Sewill shoes, then like buy them, who cares? I got these shoes in like December, January 2017, 2018. Despite all of my sizing snafus, were still way too small for my feet. But I thought they would stretch a little bit. I was wrong. I was way too proud to return these. So if you live in the LA area and you're like a woman's size six, then come collect your shoes. I'll give them to you. I tolerated the extreme pain of wearing those shoes for like three-ish months, and then got the low volume version. So these are the Sewell Street LVs, and I wore these until they bust in the rubber. These were perfectly fine for someone who was an intermediate climber until I decided to ride the Sewell train into my like more advanced intermediate stage of climbing. I got the free range LV. Dang, this shoe actually gave me a lot of problems. I would be doing heel hooks and my heel would straight up pop out of my shoe. And I feel like I knew it wasn't a sizing issue because my toes still felt really painfully uncomfortable. So after I tolerated those shoes for around six, seven months, they busted. A lot of people say that the Sewell rubber is really soft and it wears through pretty fast. I don't have enough evidence to back that up, but I do think that my footwork is pretty decently okay enough to not bust through rubber really quickly. If you are gonna buy Sewell shoes, I have heard from multiple people that the shoe rubber does not last very long because it's pretty soft. They make their own rubber, it's called like dark matter. After my fiasco with those shoes, I just looked up best shoes for narrow feet with 
little heels. And that's when I came upon the La Sportiva Solutions. These are a pretty common climbing shoe. So far, I've really liked these. I love how aggressive they are, and they have like this little nubbin over here that makes it really easy to claw down on overhang holds. That's the main reason why people choose aggressive shoes is they want a lot of precision and they want to be able to claw down on holds when they are on like overhang climbs. I do want to close this video out with a little bit of a disclaimer. When you're starting out climbing, there is a very negligible marginal improvement that having a high performance shoe like this will give you. Sure, when you do branch into like more expensive shoes, even as someone at my level, I only have one pair of climbing shoes. Because climbing shoes are expensive. And I mean, do I have this one pair of shoes because it's the best climbing shoe for me and it works amazingly well on a lot of different types of climbing? Of course not. The level that I currently climb does not demand different various shoe types to complete. I find that if I can't send a route, it's not because of the type of shoe that I'm wearing, it's because there's some sort of deficit in my technique. In closing, the best climbing shoe that you can get is the one that fits. And the way that you can tell whether a climbing shoe fits is to try on as many as possible. That might not be possible for some of you who don't live super close to an REI or a climbing shoe outlet, but try and research the best that you can for your specific foot type, order sparingly, send things back, and good luck finding those perfect pair of climbing shoes for you at this moment. I watched so many climbing shoe YouTube videos in order to film this video. I omitted a lot of information, which is why I compiled a playlist for you specifically, which you can find over here. These are the best of the best that I found on that binge, and while I'm at it, I might as well promote some of my videos as well. So here's a couple of my videos too. I really appreciate you sticking to the very end my rambly ass, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.